Hey guys, Owen here, uh, Ronald's business partner. Today I'm going to break down a few things regarding paid ads because we've been getting questions about how does paid ads work, is it worth it, um, you know, all kinds of questions relating to paid ads versus SEO. And I'm just trying to address a few of those questions in this video and hopefully you'll end up knowing exactly when to do paid ads, uh, what type of paid ads to do and how to combine it with your SEO campaigns. So the first question is, is the paid ads as good as SEO? And let's start with SEO because SEO is frankly where you'll get the best leads. Um, people find you, they have a high intent and there's no paid uh, sponsored anything showing on your website. So they find you on their own and they like what you offer and then they reach out. That's the best type of lead you can get in my opinion. Another point on SEO is that it's very cost effective if and when you're up at the top. So if you get in the map pack and you rank for a few good keywords, you're getting consistent leads from that and you already build up and outcompeted the other guys in your area. That's most likely a very high ROI um, lead generation source for you. So there is the if statement in that as if you can't get up there, you know, it simply might not be worth it for the amount of money you need to put in to be at those um, high ranking positions on that specific keyword. Then that's a time when you can look into paid ads. <clears throat> so the big benefit about paid ads is that it's quick and it's fast results. You know if it's working within, depending on the on the source or channel you use, uh, would be within one week to one month. That's typically when you would be able to generate leads in and you would be able to know, hey, what type of leads are we bringing in? What's the quality like? And, uh, and what's the cost associated with that? So that's the good thing about paid ads. Um, the other good thing is that you can do direct targeting. So you can have a specific campaign targeting a specific service that really does well for your business. And for example, if it's a pest control business you own, you might be getting a ton of leads in from your SEO efforts, but you might want to get more bird pest control jobs or more bed bug jobs. So that's a case when you would look at specifically hyper targeting a paid ads campaign towards the, the jobs that you want more of. And that's a, that's a real good thing for your business overall because then obviously if that's a proven service that you know is a, it's a good in and out, it's a, it's a good high profitable uh, service, you might be willing to pay a bit more upfront than just getting you know random jobs in organically. You might even be able to say no to some jobs because you rather want these other jobs that you're getting in. So the third thing about paid ads that's really good is that you can have omnipresence. And that just means that you'll be anywhere and everywhere on the internet in that specific location. So if you're a local business, which we typically work with, um, the good thing about Facebook ads, for example, is that it's very affordable and you can kind of be generating leads, but also be branding your business at the same time. So let's say you're a roofing company um, you can run ads where you show, you know, your crew, yourself on the ads. You can build that relationship. You can build your brand and you will also get leads from that at the same time. So it's like a two for one. Another good thing with that is that you will boost the overall business by doing that because a lot of people will see you on the social. Um, they will then go in and Google your name. So you'll get the branded traffic. You'll then get more website visits and I think we'll almost always see with Facebook ads is that your website visits would, would uh, creep up and also your general revenue in the business would also increase. So how does PPC and CPM work? So PPC stands for pay per click and CPM stands for cost per mill. And uh, cost per mill is Facebook's metric for showing your content to a thousand impressions. So that would mean you pay in their auction system based on how many people see your advertisement. That's how they determine the cost of you uh, basically showing up. So it's like a newspaper. You pay to be in the newspaper and then it will get shown to people. Obviously here they have all the tracking and, and the algorithm and the inside auction system make sure that, you know, they, they will know exactly uh, depending on the competition and how many other advertisers there are and how good your ads um, are they will figure out how much that will cost. So as an example, if we look here uh, at a campaign we've been running uh, last year for a roofer, we were getting 
um, a CPM of $26. So that means it costs $26 to get a thousand impressions. In local businesses, typically uh, in the US, you'd be looking at a good CPM would be uh, around $20. So it depends a lot on the area. It depends a lot as well on the niche that you're in, because this is basically how competitive is it. So for Google Ads specifically, uh, you would be looking at a pay per click. So that's a cost per click and it's an auction based system depending on the competition and also a little bit about the, the landing page and what happens after the click, the quality of the AdWord uh, itself. A little bit like Facebook, they want to present a good um, product to the end user, obviously. But with Google, it's mostly about how many other people are bidding on this keyword and how that determines the cost of the click, basically. So let's fire up Rank Lightning here and look at an example. So if we're looking at painless dent removal, and this is in the UK, so we put the we've done the keyword research for a specific area uh, of the UK, and this is even in a specific city. I think this is Manchester. So what we'll see here is we can see, okay, that's decent volume and the CPC is good. So the CPC is around on average $1 per click. So that tells us we need around 10 clicks to get a lead and we will be looking at a lead cost of around 10 bucks. How does that work in our business? So before we obviously go ahead and build out a campaign and, start start to develop a, a whole strategy around this we can quickly kind of ascertain hey does this make sense for us in, in our business to pay ten dollars per lead and obviously it depends on the niche because dent repair it might be high percentage of people inquiring that wants to get it done because it's probably not that expensive and uh, it's something they are having a high search intent for and it's it's kind of urgent because they've just probably bumped the car or scratch the car or something and they just want to get that fixed so conversion rates on this might be pretty good and then we can kind of do a calculation hey does it make sense for us to start uh, even entertaining running google ads another example would be for a painting company and this is in denver so here you can see the lead cost is quite expensive so obviously that's mainly because of the competition in the area and uh, does it make sense to run ads? Yes. Does it make sense for a small company to run ads? That's a good question because it might not do. And, and that's where it kind of depends on your company and, and your goals and your sales process and how well it, is everything structured. Um, and once you know those numbers, then, okay, well, what's the lead cost we can work with? So if you do the example here, you're looking at home painting companies near me, it's good volume. Um, and the CPC is, is between 15 and 60. So I would say if you're running a good campaign, you can probably look at 20, around $20. Does that make sense? Probably, because you know we're having a lead cost of 200. If that's someone who needs a full house painting, that might be 10 grand. So customer acquisition cost might be good in this case. And that's what you always want to try to look at before building out a campaign uh, or choosing which platform to use. So that's the next thing. Um, what's the pros and cons of Google ads versus Facebook or meta ads? So meta shows ads on both Facebook and Instagram. Facebook is often cheaper for the lead quantity, and it also enables you to kind of get going with lower budgets. So you might get more leads and you might be able to start at, let's say 500 bucks a month, just to kind of dip your toes in the water and see how does it work? What kind of leads are we getting? Um, and that's a good thing, I think, with Facebook ads. It also works very well for any niches that are nice to have. So something that's not an emergency and not urgent is something I would highly recommend at least checking Facebook out for. Um, that could be decks, it could be um, uh, cleaning. So for example, roof cleaning, something that's you know might be nice to get done, but it's not an urgent thing that you are going out like a tow truck, for example, you, you car broke down, you need a tow truck. You're not sitting down on Facebook waiting for an ad to pop up. You go to Google, you call first guy and you, you're you like desperate. You want to get out of the situation. Um, the other thing with Facebook ads is they require a lot of follow-up typically, at least for the amount of leads you get in, um, they do require a fair bit of follow-up because they aren't looking for you. Remember that. So you basically present an offer to them and they are interested in that offer. So now it's your turn to kind of chase them down and to pr 
provide them with the rest of that offer, be it a, an estimate or, or whatever they have requested from your Facebook ad. So Google, on the other hand, is very good at high intent search traffic. And it's a lot like SEO, I would say. It's just um, probably geared a little bit more towards people that either don't care about um, they clicking on an ad, they just need the service and they don't care if it's the first on Google. Um, so for example, something urgent like a towing service or pest control company, you might just go with the first one on Google and then you'll obviously have to be sold on the landing page because that's where the sale really happens. So if it's a bad landing page, if, if it doesn't look good, if there's no reviews, then you're probably going back to the next Google ad on Google, or maybe you start looking into the SEO results a little further down the page. Um, but that's what Google is really, really good for any urgent services. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not good for non-urgent services. For example, roofing, Google ads work very well. So someone looking for a roof and it's the same process, basically same as the SEO. Um, so that, that, that's a good, you know, high ROI service on Google ads as well. Typically the budgets needed to run a good roofing campaigns is very high because there's a lot of competition obviously in that space. Um, but again, you will get higher quality leads. You'll get more direct phone calls compared to Facebook ads. Um, and it is a bit harder to run with lower budgets because the thing is you need to give the platform enough data from actually running the ads. And if you're just putting the say, 300 bucks a month on Google ads and it's 50 bucks a click, you can see how that pretty quickly gets eaten up and you don't really get a lot of quality data into the accounts and letting the algorithm of these giant tech companies try to help you finding the best leads. So that's why I always recommend um, looking at the CPC, looking at the area and from then you will be able to ascertain how much budget is actually needed for you to have a good campaign. You'd be having to look at getting one lead a day. That's a good best practice. Yeah, so if you can't afford to, for example, put in uh, 25 quid a day, how we're talking in a UK um, market and a UK campaign here, but this campaign is for a pest control company. We're getting the leads in at around 20 pounds a day or 20 pounds per conversion. So that means our budget should at least be that or higher because then we're we're looking at getting around that one lead a day, making enough data for Google to optimize and give us the results that we kind of expect. So here's a quick example of a campaign on both Google and Facebook ad and what to expect. So let's say you're doing a thousand dollars a month You'd be looking at, this is for local business. So obviously every niche is different. Uh, every company is different, the service in the areas, but this is a breakdown as an example. You're looking at a roofing company, for example, or a home service company. You typically be looking at a 25 to $50 lead cost on Facebook ads. Could be more, could be less. That means you're generating around 20 to 40 leads. Of those, about 60% will be actual sales opportunities, meaning that you'll get them on a phone call or you will be able to have a good um, in-home estimate at the customer's um, location. So of those 12 sales opportunities, depending on how good your sales team is, how good your sales skills um, are, what, what does that look like? I can't tell you, but I can just tell you, worst case, you'll be looking at probably around 10% and best case, it's around 30 to 50, uh, 30 to 40 percent. So let's say you're getting 12 sales opportunities. You might close one to five sales from that thousand. Whoops, from that thousand dollars a month. So this is kind of what you need to look at in terms of okay, you spend a thousand bucks, you got one to five sales. How does your profits look? And ap apart from that, also, what are you paying for the management? of the ads and does it all stack up? Does it all give a positive ROI? Then that's when it becomes interesting. For Google ads, it's about the same process. It's just the lead cost will be higher typically. So you'd be looking at 50 to hundred dollar leads on average for like home improvement services. It could be higher as well, especially in competitive areas. But for the sake of the example, this is what we're looking at. So you 
be getting 10 to 20 leads, the sales opportunities coming from these leads will also be higher because there's a higher intent behind these leads. So let's say you get eight to 16 sales opportunities and you'll be closing one to five sales again, something like that. Um, this is just a basic breakdown, obviously, uh, but it gives you a sense of what to expect when you're running these type of ads. Um, and also tells you that it's not all about the ads, it's also about your business and the back end. How good is your sales process? How quickly can you follow up on the leads? How quickly uh, can you call the leads essentially within five minutes of a lead coming in from Facebook? You should be on the phone with them. You should, should already set the appointment. And uh, if they don't pick up at that point, you shouldn't leave them there hanging for at least uh, too long. You should call them the first day, uh, at least a few times, second day, again, two or three times um, before you kind of give up and, and abandon the lead. So this is the big question, obviously, is it worth it? And it depends. So first off, it has to be a holistic strategy around your business. So like I mentioned earlier, paid ads might not be a direct lead generation source only. It could also be that it helps you grow your website visits. So it's a whole thing that you need to look at for, for, this, for your specific business, for the services that you provide, and you need to really tailor make that campaign to the services that you want is most profitable and um, that's when you really look at the roi and say hey okay this is a good thing let's keep those ads running let's put the right budget in and let's uh, keep this as a supplement to the seo because in my world you should do seo always that's you know that's just a given you should have your own uh, organic leads coming in and then you should try to amplify your marketing efforts with paid ads and try to really be sharp in your local market. So the thing is, it's a little hit and miss. You might not hit it from the first get go. So you might try something and I've spoken with, I don't know how many, uh, you know, smaller business owners, but they're, still, they're telling me, hey, Facebook ads doesn't work. I've tried it. And I asked them, hey, how did you run the ads? And they tell me, I, I don't, I just boosted the post or I, I just ran a basic campaign with this. And I said, how can you then know if it worked or not? Because you only did one thing and you probably didn't set everything up right. You probably didn't set up the pixels. You didn't have the tracking set up. You're, you didn't have a good landing page. There's so many things, the sales copy, what kind of images did you use? What kind of um, keywords did you use in your descriptions and in your headlines that kind of activates Facebook, uh, Facebook's ads algorithm in the back end? So there's a ton of things that needs testing. And this is why it has to be uh, at least a longer process for you to deem if it works or not. And that's why usually you would have to work with an agency or have someone on your team inside in house that really knows how to work Facebook ads because it's a skill. It's like Google ads. It's a, it's a skill you need to master. It's a skill you need to uh, be good at running um, on a longer time frame. Also, it's seasonal. So obviously, if you're running a deck company, you're doing decking, the SEO might pick up uh, a lot of leads in this in the springtime but hey why not try if you could stack your calendar and really get two times three times the leads in uh, in the beginning of the season when everybody's looking for a deck you want to capitalize on that you want to get a lot of leads in that's when you run spe specific paid ads campaigns like like we're doing uh, so you could be getting uh, leads for decks for let's say 40 bucks you could stack your calendar up with, with deck leads in that uh, specific season. And then you can turn them off later. Right now, it's it's later in the season. Decks aren't really as popular as a as a as a you know inquiry right now. So you would probably turn off your ads because you might have enough work booked in already. Uh, so that's that's another thing that's really important when you look at is it worth it or not. It's it's a flexible thing. Last thing is that you will need to know your numbers and you need to know your LTV. So you will be able to actually know if it works or not. Because I see this a lot of the time with companies I work with where we're getting good, cheap leads, um, but it's not about the lead cost. It's about how much does it cost to acquire a customer and how much is that customer worth to your business? Is it a repeat customer? Is it someone who will come back? Is it someone who will generate a referral? Because that's the, really what you should look at. Uh, and not just the lead cost. Obviously, we're always trying to get cheaper leads, but if you're getting a good ROI on a $100 lead, there's no reason you shouldn't be continue, continually running that campaign. 
Um, so that's just my that that's my thoughts on on lead cost. It's a good metric, but it's not the end of be all because you can get cheap leads, and if you have a bad business on the back end, uh, it might not be worth it still. And you can get expensive leads, and it might be very worth it for you because you can close a lot of those leads coming in uh, and make a healthy ROI if you have the right service up up front that you're selling. So I think that's the basics of it. Um, obviously, we're going to cover more in, in future videos on paid ads, specifically going into detail on how to set up a campaign, um, specifics about landing pages, which type of creatives to use, how to do the sales copy, how to do the back end follow up. Uh, a lot of different stuff on paid ads will showcase campaigns that we've run with clients and show you exactly um, the results that we're getting. And if you're in a nearby market or if you can look at that campaign and say, hey, these guys get these results, then probably I could get the same results. That's a good, valid way of thinking. So I think we'd like to show a lot of case studies so you can see how uh, these things perform in real life, obviously. But yeah, that's it. Um, that's it from me, and I hope you have a good day.